Every day, 15,000 Indians turn 60 and become senior citizens in a country that ranks the lowest out of 43 countries on the Natic 6 Global Retirement Index. India is currently home to about 140 million elderly, low pensions, meager savings and a lack of health insurance cover mean that they enter old age with great financial insecurity. There are 90 million elderly in India who are still working for a living. What's more concerning, one out of two Indians also enter old age with a chronic disease. Not surprising with every six diabetic in the world being an Indian. As the years go by, physical aging with unexpected onset of illnesses like dementia or Alzheimer's makes day-to-day -day living a nightmare. What makes it more terrifying is living alone. Believe it or not, three out of ten elderly in India live alone or with another senior citizen. Majority of them are women. In most cases, children would have left in search of a better livelihood, either to live in cities or even abroad. In fact, according to an Antara report, one out of two elderly face mental health issues during the pandemic. You do not know what it's like to be lonely until you spend time alone wishing for companionship, said Ratan Tata recently. Companionship, community and consistent care is what they crave. The neglect on our part needs urgent addressal and it is being addressed with geriatric care evolving from just running errands for elders to engaging them online and offline with weekly events, reinvigorating their lives with dedicated residential communities and taking care of their health with assisted living and at-home care. Hello and welcome to Young Turks, India's longest running show on startups and entrepreneurship. I'm Shireen Bhan. To talk about the importance of expanding the geriatric care space in India, I'm now joined by Tara Singh Bachani, the founder of Antara Senior Care, Somijit Roy, co-founder of Imoha Elder Care and Nia Neil D'Souza, the co-founder of Get Set Up. Tara, Samajit and Neil, many thanks for joining us here on CNBC TV 18's Young Turks. You know, for years, we have talked about India's demographic advantage, India's demographic dividend. The focus has been on the young population, the young workforce. And somehow, uh, there hasn't been much attention on another very important aspect and reality that we need to deal with, and that is geriatric care. It's also a population that's getting older. And, uh, you know, three of you are perhaps a handful of entrepreneurs in India who are trying to address uh, this space, the silver economy, the geriatric care economy. Tara, let me start by asking you, when you set up Antara Senior Living, and of course now Antara is also looking at assisted care services, wholly owned subsidiaries of Max India, what was the thought process from setting up your first residential, senior residential community in Dehradun, uh, you know, with 180 apartments, you're now looking at setting up in Noida, uh, and that's almost double of what you started with in Dehradun. What have been the challenges? Thank you for having me. It's nice to be the senior most of this panel. Uh, we've been at this for 10 years now, uh, slow and steady. And I think um, we're building this whole concept brick by brick, Shirin, because it is that serious and that important. And essentially, when we started 10 years ago, it was with a vision and Samajit on the panel was part of that dream uh, as part of the Antara team back then. So he knows what I'm referring to. But essentially, it was a dream to impact quality of life for the aging population. Um, up until us, I think we were sort of have been the lone wolves in this uh, for quite a while. But the idea was that can we find ecosystems, products and services that take the aging process of seniors to be efficient, progressive, joyful and happy. And therefore, in that journey, we started with the one residential community in Dehradun. And in 2019, we actually expanded to three brand new verticals other than the residences vertical. So not only are we expanding the residences vertical by putting a community in Noida and other parts of NCR and probably other parts of India by next year, but we decided we also had to take from lifestyle all the way up to life care. And the new verticals address essentially that. So there are care homes that deal with pre-op, post-op care, 24-7 medium or short-term care for seniors, home care, as well as medical products. And I think the biggest challenges for us have been three. One was really changing the mindset of both the primary and secondary audience to understand that investing in a quality of life as you get older is mission critical. Two, it's been influencing policy and government to understand and recognize this as a sector. And three has been probably the ability for people to pay because insurance ecosystems are not influencing senior care and senior spends. 
but we're seeing this shift and we're, we're seeing the narrative change. So it's very exciting at the moment. Samijit, let's talk about your journey and what you're attempting to do and address through Imoha Elder Care. I think it's it's more personal. I think it started with my own mom, my own dad, and seeing the struggles that India's elders face, uh, you know, over the years and how they're able to manage it from the comfort of their own home. Uh, and the word Imoha goes into exactly that, that uh, if you turn around the word Imoha, it's a home. And it's it's the... It's the acceptance that India's elders, unlike a lot that has happened in the world, would want to stay in their own home. 99% uh, of India's elders want to stay in their own home. That's what you want to go when you are not well or you're in a fancy house in Florida, you would finally want to go back to your own home. So how do we stitch you know, all the services that you would otherwise get in a beautiful uh, you know, facility, beautiful uh, you know, continuing care retirement community worldwide? How can you deconstruct all those things and be able to stream it into your own home is what Imoha started to build towards. Uh, and therefore, whether it is emergency 24 by 7 support, where today we save more than 350 lives, or it is doing engagement and events using the Imoha app, uh, where we've done more than 3,000 programs now. But I think more importantly, Shireen, the th thing is about how does this, what seems as a challenge, come out as an opportunity? Because that is really the, the thing between the work that is being done across all large elder care companies in the country, the opportunity is to look at a 40,000, 50,000 crore market uh, where we can make uh, an impact and a difference in the quality of life, as Tara said. That is really the uh, driving factor. Yes, and that... Uh, absolutely. And that's what I want to dig a little deeper into uh, that, you know, what is that opportunity? And more importantly, what will be the different pieces of that opportunity? Because each of you are addressing different segments, different categories, different needs within that uh, uh, large market. Uh, in fact, Neil is doing something completely different from what Tara and you are doing. So let me get Neil into the conversation. Neil, talk to us about Get Set Up and what you're attempting to do. Yeah, thanks, Shireen. Um... So yeah, Get Set Up is, you know, just over two years old. And while I was looking at your introductory segment, I'm one of those kids who abandoned my parents in Goa and have moved to the U.S. And, you know, felt like, how do I take care of them so that they can live happy, healthy, productive lives as they are aging in? And what I realized is, you know, um, there are two categories, right? There's aging in, where people like my parents who are turning 60 65 are so-called retired, but they are feeling active. They want to learn. They want to mm. meet new people. They want to follow their passions because they didn't have that opportunity growing up because of the Indian education system and, you know, how we grew up in our society. So I was like, what if we create a platform yeah. for them to pursue their hobbies and passion? And if they do that, it will increase their mental enrichment. It will increase their physical... Uh, health. It will also help them connect with new people, so reduce loneliness. But also, yeah. they can come on the platform and teach and make some extra money. And so, really, the problem that we were trying to solve was how do we help the 60 to 70-year-old live longer so that their, you know, well, insurance doesn't cover and our health system doesn't cover a lot of the challenges in elder care. If we do something more preventative, we can actually extend the aging process and also reduce the cost of care. So that's kind of what Get Set Up is. It's it's a learning platform. Uh, we have over 2 million people in India who have taken classes in the last two years. And they do everything from yoga together. They are doing uh, discussion groups. They are playing games online. They are also doing things in person now where they're going to concerts and they're going on cruises. So it's really uh, allowing this generation to pursue their passions where they didn't have their opportunity and thus living healthy lives. And Tara, I want to come back to you now to address the issue of how do we replicate some of these models. Let's start by talking about yours. Uh, one, of course, is the assisted living model that you are now looking at. And of course, then you've got the senior uh, community, senior living communities that you're setting up. How do you make it accessible? How do you make it more affordable? What will need to change so that more people can avail of these services? So, Shireen, I 
think first of all, you know, more people like Swamiji than Neil need to join hands. I mean, I could think of three things that Neil and 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 and, and, and I and Antara and Get Set Up could do together, and that in itself will have to have a multiplier effect. So, Neil, please expect a phone call from me after this. Um, the the senior living bit, the residence is big. We have been able to scale up by doing joint development models with landowners who understand that there is a premium financially for them if they partner with unique niche boutique concepts like us. Um, and the government's been you know, supportive in creating policies around building norms and making it easier for us to create communities because the fact is that while the world is going digital, and I believe in that as being a huge part of what any industry or category is, the physical proximity of human beings to one another will continue to be the clincher in aging positively and well. And that is why we believe at the fulcrum of everything we do, some level of physical manifestation of spaces and ecosystems have to exist. 